Let's pretend that it's 2002 again, and we have a Game Boy Color, and we also have four, specifically four, Game Boy Color games that we want to play on the go. We could put them all in our pocket, get one of those weird carrying cases, or wait several years until uh, one of those EverDrives come out, or we could fast forward to 2022, I think, I forgot what year it is, I haven't been paying attention, and make a device that allows you, not the EverDrive, to play four Game Boy games on one Game Boy Color. It may be stupid, it probably is, but I have an idea. So this is our Game Boy Color, this is the portfolio view of it, this is our cart slot, and the idea is to make a PCB that will slide into the cart slot, contact all the pins on the inside of the Game Boy, route all those pins to another PCB that will be mounted with standoffs that will come back here. On this PCB we'll have a connector and then some sort of retention system that will hold yet another PCB. I know it looks terrible. And on this PCB we'll have our four game slots uh, which will allow us to plug in four games. And the idea is to make it mechanical uh, so that way we can pick up this PCB, rotate it, and set it back down to essentially plug in another game and we'll have that four times on one weird assembly. So Since we're on the subject of PCBs, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. They offer a variety of PCB services ranging from standard PCB to rigid flex. Simply upload your Gerber files for a quick build time and amazing quality PCBs. In addition to PCBs, they also offer CNC, injection molding, and 3D printing services, which I'll definitely be using in the future. Definitely check out their website, and thank you so much PCB Way for sponsoring my channel. So now we can take this idea and run it over to Eagle and see if I can design some sort of system that will allow us to do this. This is the first PCB right here. It'll plug into the Game Boy cartridge slot, contact all of its pins, and then bring all the pins up to this 32-pin header, which will then connect to this 32-pin header on the second PCB, which I'm calling the Interconnect PCB, and its job is to connect this PCB to this PCB. This PCB is our four cart slot PCB. Its job is to hold the four games and it works by rotating it. So for example, um, the game we want to load will be in the down position unfortunately. This could have been avoided if I did a few different design tweaks such as routing the traces for this cart slot to this pin header. Uh, but that would have resulted in too much trace traffic, and I don't want to introduce that yet on the first edition of this crazy project, so I kept it like this. It also could have been avoided if I got rid of this PCB and extended this one in length and just put this whole assembly above the Game Boy, but I like the idea of it being behind the Game Boy. Uh, so anyways, how it works is we select which game we want to play by picking up this, this PCB, rotating it, uh, which will line up to the bottom. So, for example, this will be the game we're playing. Uh, this 32-pin header will line up to this 32-pin header, which will then run to all of these connections on this 32-pin header, which will then go to this 32-pin header down to the cart slot. For those curious, if you're wondering why this PCB has a lot of trace traffic compared to that one or that one, this, the reason is this header right here has to be rotated 180 degrees to allow for the traces on this PCB to be routed cleanly. Um, if you look at it this way, if we took this, this connector and rotated it and had pin one right here, all of these would line up quite nicely. But over here, we would have to accommodate for that flip. Uh, so pin one would be over here, and we'd have to route this this pin to over here, and it would look like a mess. So I didn't do it on this PCB because I wanted this one to be clean, and um, this one paid the price for that, unfortunately. However, it should still work. And now it's time to order our PCBs. We're just going to head on over to PCB Way, click on PCB Instant Quote, click on Quick Order PCB, Add Gerber file, select our Gerber file. I'm uploading in three, so this will be the uh, PCB that contacts the contacts inside the Game Boy Color, and we have that right here. I'm going to change the thickness of it to 1.2. This will match the thickness of a PCB um, that you would find inside a Game Boy game. You could change this. If you didn't want to use a case, you could change it to probably 2.8 or 3. Uh, this would allow you to just plug the PCB in without needing a case around it to accommodate for the lack of height. Uh, I would double check this though before you order it. You don't want to make it too thick and not work. You could also change the solder mask color. I'm sticking with green. And you could also change the surface finish. I'm sticking with lead, uh, which is the silver kind. You could change it to gold if you're afraid of oxidizing, but I'm not. This is just a prototype and I want to see if it works first. 
And another thing is you could add bevel edges to the contacts right here, which will allow for easier insertion of the PCB into the Game Boy, but I think it'll be fine without that, as a lot of the color games don't actually have that already. Uh, so yeah, we're all set. Let's go ahead and save to cart right over here. I'm blind. The PCBs have come in the mail, so let's go ahead and open them up. So we have the PCB that'll plug into the Game Boy, the PCB interconnect assembly, and then the behemoth, <laughs> ridiculously huge, four-cart PCB that'll plug into uh, this PCB, that'll plug into this PCB. <laughs> and now it's time to start soldering everything together. I'll start with the big PCB first, just to get it out of the way. I'll solder the ground tabs first on these cart slots, and then I'll work my way across the pins. I'll load up all the pins with flux and solder each pin one at a time. You could use the drag method if you wanted to, I however prefer touching every single pin individually just so that I know it gets enough dwell time and the joint looks nice. The 32 pin headers are next and these are pretty straightforward. You just want to make sure they're aligned correctly. So I like to solder one pin on each corner and then kind of make sure it's flat before I solder the rest of the pins. That way I know it's going to line up perfectly. These standoffs are specifically selected for my hand size, that way my hand could fit in between the Game Boy and this PCB assembly without it touching anything, thus making it uh, at least a little comfortable. I know we're kind of past that, but it will help a little bit. Now we can solder this extra long 32 pin header from the cart PCB to the interconnect PCB. I had to channel my inner lock picking lawyer here to align all the pins from one PCB to the other, but once they were in place we could use two screws to combine the one PCB to the standoffs underneath it. Now it's finally time to combine all the PCBs together. The top PCB will be combined to the bottom two using a screw, a spring, and a 3D printed nut. I'm using a 3D printed nut for two reasons. One, I don't want to run out to the hardware store, and two, since I 3D printed it, I was able to print it with a smaller diameter so that way the threads really bite into it and prevent it from slipping. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug this very normal Game Boy game, obviously, into our Game Boy, and then load up all the slots. First we're going to start with Driver, so this will be the game that's loaded. Uh, slap and Space Invaders, 
army men because I'm three and Scooby-Doo. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing turns on. Good sign. All right, so it works. As you can see. <laughs> so it does work. It fits nice in my hand. The whole assembly is a uh, decent ways away from the from uh, the back of my hand, so it's not getting in the way. And we have a game working, so that means everything lines up, everything's right. I was kind of worried about that. Uh, all the contacts line up, and we are playing driver. Okay, so I'm done playing driver, so let's load another game. Uh, easy. We're just going <laughs> to pull up on this 3D printed handle, pop out that uh, connector from that header, rotate it 90 degrees, and then set it back down. The spring provides tension, so it kind of pulls this whole PCB to the interconnect assembly. So the next game should be loaded, and it's working too. All right, so let's load one more game. So the next game will be Army Men. Let's go ahead and pop out the platter, rotate, and set it back down. Okay, so this game is actually pretty dark. I don't have a nicely lit Game Boy, uh, but this one's pretty dark. So let's go ahead and load Scooby-Doo. Pop out the platter, rotate, and drop. I don't think I'll ever get sick of that. Alright, so the Game Boy Color is actually pretty dim, and you can't really see the display all that well, but we can hook this whole thing up to the more advanced Game Boy SP, and, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, you can't even see the Game Boy Advance, <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn it on. Power switch. And it boots. So, I mean, I mean, it's not bad. It's not that. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this crazy build that definitely serves no real purpose. I just wanted to make it because it sounded like a fun idea, and honestly, it was. Check out the description of this video for all the parts used. I'll link as much hardware as I can. I'll link the Gerber files as well, um, and follow my Instagram. So I'll be giving away one of these fully assembled to some random person on Instagram who uh, participates in the contest that I haven't even started yet. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. Stick around and I will see you next time.